Desmond Chu. Question four, please. Mr. Speaker, the most severe downturn in recent years was triggered by the global financial crisis of 2008. Measures taken then helped companies to manage excess manpower and to invest in skills for the recovery. In a Ministry of Manpower survey carried out in 2009, three in four companies with earlier plans to retrench workers reported they would postpone or reduce the number of affected workers due to government assistance schemes such as jobs credit and the skills program for upgrading and resilience. Helped by improving external conditions, resident unemployment rate rose but did not exceed 5% throughout the global financial crisis. Our current situation and outlook are actually completely different from that in 2008. For example, uh, in the first half of 2009, retrenchments exceeded 19,000 when in a typical year during that period, retrenchments would be about 15,000. But in the first half of 2009 alone, retrenchments were 19,000. Uh, job losses uh, estimated for the whole year, uh, some analysts came in with numbers such as 100,000. So that was the situation in 2009, in the beginning of 2009. But if you look at the situation today, actually retrenchments have not uh, picked up and uh, if we look at the second quarter of 2019, retrenchments remained fairly low at 2,300. Total employment growth slowed, but it did not stall. Employment growth remained robust in sectors such as infocoms and information and communications, in community, social and personal services, in professional services and financial services. This suggests that while employers could be exercising greater caution in hiring, most are not laying off their existing workers. MOM together with MTI and other government agencies is monitoring the economy and the labour market closely. We are ready to step up support for companies and workers under the Adapt and Grow initiative. Workers can tap on employment assistance and programmes offered by WSG and NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute, E2I. <coughs> These include the career support program, the career trial and professional conversion programs that provide wage and training support to help workers access new jobs or reskill for new opportunities. Job seekers can also consider taking up the attach and train professional conversion programs which train the workers ahead of hiring demand and these are available in selected sectors with strong growth potential. In addition, WSG's Careers Connect and NTUC's E2I Career Centres offer employment facilitation services such as career coaching, employability workshops, job fairs and job matching. The Task Force for Responsible Retrenchment and Employment Facilitation, which was formed in 2016, proactively reaches out to retrenched workers and provides them with timely employment support, including job matching. The task force will also continue to engage retrenching companies on responsible retrenchment practices. Mr. Desmond Chu. I thank the Minister for her um, reply. I've got two clarifications. One, um, in the event of a long and prolonged uh, slowdown uh, whereby jobs are lost, uh, what are the levers that the Ministry is prepared to consider, including uh, reducing foreign manpower quota and what the support given to the vulnerable workers, especially those who are older and might find it harder to transit to another growth industry. Mr. Speaker, it is premature to speculate uh, what kinds of support measures should be introduced. The reason being that, um, as I explained earlier, the current situation is a slowdown um, very different from the kinds of downturns that um, uh, we most recently experienced uh, in 2008-2009. And the approach that we take is to make a correct assessment of the situation. We'll have to ask 
in any slowdown or a general downturn, what are the reasons that have caused the slowdown or the downturn? Is it due to cyclical factors? Is it due to structural factors or a combination of both? Because the strategies that we then adopt to bring about a recovery will be very different under the circumstances, uh, depending on what they are. Uh, specifically, Mr. Chu asked about foreign worker quotas. In fact, in the services sector, the dependency ratio ceiling uh, will be reduced downwards. Um, we said in the budget debate during the Committee of Supply debate earlier this year that there was a need to bring us on a more sustainable path when it comes to um, the growth of uh, foreign employment in the services sector. We actually had quite a lively debate about whether those measures were appropriate. Uh, we we uh, uh, agreed that we would go ahead with two moves, uh, one beginning in January 2020 and then another step coming in January 2021. Those are still on the cards. Uh, at the present time, the assessment that led to that set of recommendations have not changed. It is still important for us to press on with restructuring. So that quota reduction uh, is going ahead. Um, Mr. Chu also asked about older workers. Um, there have been a lot of uh, support measures put in place for older workers, uh, including the special employment credit, as well as many programs such as job redesign uh, that uh, help companies to retain their older workers, help them to stay um, productive and uh, able to contribute. Um, I recognize uh, where Mr. Chu is coming from. He is concerned that um, if there are job losses, will older workers bear the brunt of it. We are equally concerned and we will watch very closely. But in the meantime, uh, that should not detract us from putting in place measures that will support senior employment uh, for the medium to longer term uh, because of the demographic transition that we can expect uh, to uh, observe in the next decade. Um, that set of recommendations uh, have been considered by a tripartite work group and I think it won't be too long before that set of recommendations uh, are presented. Thank you.